What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm sorry, you turned it in. Of course she did. We have a special guest, and you had to act a fool right I'm now. Not I see a how fool. you are. I am not acting a fool. We've You're got acting Matt a fool. Griffey here with us from I Bear am and sorry Son, for him. and we're gonna talk all things Gatco and Bear and Son. It's time for Guys Talk Knives. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in the studio at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. It's another episode of Guys Talk Knives. And look, guys, we got Swags. We got Melina over there. We got John back there. But that is not Jason. It's we not. are welcoming the son of Bear and Son right here in the studio with us. This is Mr. Matt Griffey. Welcome to the show. I appreciate your time up here and uh, look forward to showing some different things. And we have some really cool stuff to look at. And one thing in particular that I didn't know, I mean, I have been told it many, many times, but I forget it. It just slips right out of my mind. You guys are making the Gatco stuff now. That's right. We uh, we purchased Gatco a couple years ago and we've been manufacturing uh, the sharpening systems are actually made in the U.S. We, we manufactured them. We moved it from Buffalo down to uh, Jacksonville, Alabama. So we're making it right there in our facility where we're making the knives. And uh, then there we have the pocket sharpeners are, okay. uh, as well. So. so I think a lot of people are familiar with uh, Bear and Son, the line of knives, especially some of the new stuff, and especially the old stuff, but as well as the new stuff. But I think people have an idea in their mind what a sharpening system is. And I, I, I think you have the ability to show us how this one is good, how it's better, and how it really keeps your keeps your stuff going the right way to sharpen up a knife the right way. I'm highly intrigued. Yes. Yeah, that, that's one reason why I kind of wanted to go through the sharpening system because it's really something that uh, makes it easy for the end consumer, but it looks difficult and and it looks like, like you got to go through a big long gotta, process. Yeah, that's a big process, and it's really not that way. And the other thing is it gives you a, a perfectly centered edge. Right. And it holds that ed angle for you. And it's, you know, it's really simple. Okay, so, well, show, us, show us how so this works. Really how this is, I pre-mounted the knife, uh, but basically you just take the knife and mount it in the in the grooves. You tighten up the brass screw and still it's as tight as it'll go. And then you use this larger screw back here to get it really tight so that way the knife isn't moving in the clamp. Right. From there, my knife, this is my knife I carry every day. Um, okay. So from there, I take just a, I grab a coarse edge, because I usually will abuse my, my blade pretty Don't bad. Don't we all? You can hear the nicks in my blade, <laughs> you know, from from abuse. Right. Uh, and I like to keep a little steeper angle with some people. 19 degrees is about, you know, where the factory standard is for where a factory knife is. Right. I usually keep mine up at around 22, because I like for that edge to hold up longer. Right. And let me abuse it a little longer before <laughs> right. I have to sharpen it. But with this system, all you're basically going to do is just set the stone down on the edge uh -huh. and move up okay. to the, the grind, lift up, come back down, and go up again. Okay. You're going to do that three times per area, and then overlap about half the stone and do it again. See, I've tried other systems in the past, and that is where I, I'm screwing up. I'm wanting to drag across the blade. Well, what you're wanting to do is remove material. So the right. only way you can remove and I can material see it on top of there is, is to move up across. So that way you're cutting blade. You're cutting. Okay. You got to cut the steel. Okay. So once you've kind of run out, and you can really turn it up on an angle and really doctor the edge. Okay. And doctor that tip up. So that way you get the tip, you know, razor sharp, so you can pierce into something. And then it's just as simple as turning it over and, and doing, the same doing the same thing. Make sure you're on the same angle. Right from one side to the next because you want your knife blade edge center and you're just going to do the same thing over again. Obviously I'm going to go a little faster. No, no, that's totally fine. So basically and your rod is holding the right angle to the blade out to the front every so, stroke. Right, so what you see here is I'm getting a nice, nice bevel on both sides, mm -hmm. and you saw how bad my knife blade looked sure. beforehand. Now you can see it's very right. balanced. I can go to camera even, two right down here. And so from one side to the next right. is the same width already. Right, and so then you're gonna step on stones, right? So you're gonna step up to the, once you get a, you've removed material with the course. Right, so okay. uh, so if I, if I remove the course, I should work the stones down. You've got, a, you've got an extra course, a course, uh, a medium, and a fine grit stone. Right. And then we do have a serrated stone. If you had serration, you could actually go in, and this knife doesn't have enough serration. 
but right. you could actually go in and you just twist this stone as you went that, up. I have always to wanted to know points. how to do that. And then you got a sharp and serrated knife, and then the little serration scallops you just set in there and just drag straight up. Okay, that makes sense. That makes absolutely sense. That's actually sense. really cool. So all you do on the fine is just repeat the process to mm -hmm. polish that edge. Right. And we won't bore everybody with watching me do it. <laughs> um, but once you were done, you'd just have that edge polished. Right. And what's really neat about this system is, one, you have finger guards. You know, my a lot of a lot of the systems and, and procedures out there, there's nothing right. to keep you from wrapping your fingers down here. Well, as soon as you shove that stone up yes. that blade, you nick fingertips. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And you get in a hurry and you take out a fingertip. So the right. finger guards are nice. The other thing, the stones are a little wider than most everybody's st right. stones in the industry, so you're getting a little more coverage and get the job done faster. Nice. And then you're not dealing with a rod that's getting bent or see that's or I loose. Noticed. We don't have we don't send it out with a rod loose like this. For these systems, the rod actually stores neatly inside the handle. Wow! And sits inside the case, so when you're ready to use it, you just pull the rod out. Right. Right. And if you're doing a kitchen, I've knife, noticed some other systems that are out there that the rods are hmm. literally separate. So you might get two rods with four stones, and you're right. switching rods throughout the process. That's pretty cool, especially the ability to go into the handle itself. Right. I like and, that. And then there's longer screws if you were doing like a, a machete or something that had thicker blade steel, you could do it. And the other thing is, we, we give you six angles. Yes. A lot of the other systems are three or four, four at the most. most. Yeah. Uh, the six angles is nice, especially if you want to try to do kitchen knives. Right. Yeah. You know, if you if you want to actually come down here and sharpen a chef knife on eleven degrees, you can do the you can do it. We do make a a clamp system to actually clamp it to a workbench. I do recommend if you're doing a machete or right. something, don't right. hold don't hold a big big right. kitchen knife out in your hand and do it the way I just did this because you're probably going to nick your wrist with a very sharp knife. Right. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the cool thing is, like this set, we sell this set for forty bucks. Yeah, that's that's a bargain too. Right, yeah. and that's the and, and it included in that set. It's the professional sharpening kit. Uh, you've got the nice the clamp and the clamp angle guide uh, for precise honing. You've got extra coarse, coarse, medium, fine sharpening hones. You've got a hone that uh, for serrated blades. Some oil it comes in that as well. Yeah, I didn't use the oil. I didn't want to make a mess on your table, no, but you know totally you fine. normally put oil on the stones. And what the oil is, it's not. A lot of people think the oil's there to keep you from damaging the steel on your blade. The steel right. on your blade's hard. You're not damaging it. What you're doing is you're keeping that metal that I was flaking up here on the blade from impregnating the stone. Okay. Because it'll build up on the stone, right. and then the stone won't cut very well. So, so the oil actually moves those metal shavings away and keeps that dust and that metal that was flicking up on mm -hmm. the blade, it keeps it all locked in and kind of running off. So this may be a crazy mm. question, but do you need to clean that stone after each sharpening? If, if you used oil when you were doing it, you don't have to. Okay. If you didn't, uh, you can take oil and kind of rub across it. Just rag? And, and the magic thing to this is, if you're still having trouble, take a, like a, one of those big pencil erasers, you know, we used to yeah, have yeah, when we were in, yeah. in, in uh -huh. elementary school. And you can take one of those pencil erasers and just rub across it with some oil, and the pencil eraser will absorb the That's compound awesome. build up on it. So if you don't mm. have oil at the at the moment, you can kind of go ahead and sharpen your knife, throw some three in one oil on it, take a pencil nice. eraser, and, and clean the metal off the stone. That's awesome. That is really easy. Comes with a case, so you guys can just store it on your workbench or whatever you need. It all uh, breaks down just to that really small size. That is kind of awesome. It's just a, it's an easy set. It's easy for people to use, but but it's one of those things if you don't see it used, agreed. It feels like it's harder to use than it is. Agreed. And and a lot of people, you know, I know me. I've tried several different ones of these, and the sharpening stone itself. Until you get really good at trying to use just a sharpening stone and hold that angle just precisely, especially going around the deep end of a curve. My grandfather used to do that. It amazed me to sit and watch him work in Arkansas stone with a carbon mm -hmm. steel knife. The problem is nowadays, I mean, about half what we manufacture, you know, is using some kind of steel nowadays. You can't do that. Yeah. It, it, just like the stones on these, these are specially set grits mm -hmm. of aluminum oxide compounds mm -hmm. to give you an exact grit. The other thing is they're a lot harder than an Arkansas stone. Okay. So, you know, you they can handle the heavier right. duty steels. And even at that, if you're talking about like a, a Bola 390 or something like that, yeah. you're 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 gonna have to go to a diamond set even at that, yes. which we manufacture a diamond set yes. as well. It's, you know, like 20 bucks more. Yeah, I've tried but, to sharpen S35 V at and it just, while well, it holds an edge forever, 
Right. It, once you get it unsharp, it's hard to get it sharpened back where you want it to be. Yeah, that's that's one reason why we use a lot of 14C 28N because that's a steel that does accept a sharpening, mm -hmm. but really holds a good edge. Yeah. And some of the higher end steels, we use them. Uh, you know, we use some S30V on a few projects, right. um, but it really makes it so the end user, once they get it dull, right. we see that they, you know, which we, do, we allow them to send do, it back and we'll Don't you think, though, that it, sometimes but. people just, I mean, we get a little bit overboard sometimes with super steels and stuff, because it, when we talk about this a lot on the show, so people were carrying 440A and 440C for a long time. They were carrying 1095 carbon steel blades forever. Right, and we still manufacture a lot of right, 1095 uh -huh. carbon steel because people can sharpen it. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's the old saying of if you like to whittle your blade rather than whittling the knife, that 1095 is perfect because you're that guy who likes to sit and hone that blade until it's razor sharp. Right. And you can do it every time. And, and it holds such a keen edge when you get it on there, you know. But as soon as you give it abuse, yep. you've got to resharpen it. Yep. But if you're doing little fine tasks with a 1095 blade, you know, it, it stays sharp for a long time. Yes, it does. You know, That's you awesome. put a real keen edge on it. Well, I know you brought some sharp things for us to look at, so let's jump into those. If you want to just push well, those over to the that's side. That's right. We, we all like sharp, pointy things. Absolutely. We love them. We love them. I think the first thing we've got to show is the, oh, it's the sidewinder. I love the action on this thing. I just flicked my wrist and I didn't need to. It just rolls out. I mean, it really does. I'm going to hold it. Boo. Do you see that? I jinxed myself. Wow. I did, right? I'm going to wow. hold it down here. Uh, man, if you want to tell us about this knife, I think you have your notes over the side if you need them. You don't have to have them, but I'm sure you know this one. Well, this is actually a G10 uh, handle scale. We've uh, got milling and everything. The uh, metal liners are actually milled up inside the oh, G10 yeah, show that. to provide a, a thinner knife. Uh, mm -hmm. It's reversible pocket clip on the knife. Right. 440 stainless steel blade. Uh, you know, like we talked about, you've got you know a blade steel that you can resharpen. It's a good, it's a good use blade, and uh, then from there, it's got uh, ball bearing washers in it. Yeah, and you can totally yeah. feel that in the flipping action on this knife. Right. You really, really can. I love the fact that it's got the ambidextrous uh, tip up pocket clip on it, so your lefties and your righties can use it. Um, this is a cool feature. Uh, your spacer back here serves as your lanyard as well, and right. it actually is a really good looking piece to that handle. Right, it accents the blade. We wanted something that, that worked opposite the blade that was the same finish to kind of accent the handles. And uh, then from there, we made it solid. So that way the lanyard was, mm -hmm. was good and strong. We wanted something that made a good dependable carry, mm -hmm. uh, whether somebody was just you know everyday carry or whether it was uh, a law enforcement or a professional of that nature. Uh, you know, to be able to carry and rely on. See, I feel like this is a good everyday carry. This is a good size ED carry, EDC carry. It's not too big. Right. It's not too small. It's going to ride in your pocket pretty easily. Um, it's got great grip to it. One thing you'll notice, actually, if you put that tip up, the everything is built. One reason why this lanyard is shaped the way it is, when you stick your hand in it, nothing I hate worse. Sticking my hand in my pocket uh -huh. and getting jabbed with the point of the, blade, uh, the back of the knife because it's square right here. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's no curve. So everything we've built in this line, we've really tapered here. So that way when, when your hand hits it, the meat of your hand hits it, you slide on over right. it. And there's nothing up here sharp right. to poke your hand. Cause right. I, I just hate. Yeah, that you're yeah. competing, yeah. you're trying to get into your keys and you're beating yourself to death on the side yeah. of the knife. Yeah, it happens all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Or the head so, uh, so, so bulky on such a thin knife that when you finally do get hold of your keys, you rip the whole thing out and drop it right. on the concrete. Right, exactly. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a balanced thing when, right. we, when we're designing everything, trying to figure out how to do that. But, you know, that was one thing. That's like my biggest pet peeve with a knife is it being right. real sharp right there. So everything's broke over. I like that that knife feels, um, feels substantial, but it but does not feel too heavy. Uh, and you talking about putting your steel liners up inside the uh, G10 is really, really a game changer just for weight alone because it's skeletonized right at that right. point. You're right. At that point, you've you've reduced the weight of the G10, which G10 doesn't weigh all a whole lot, but you've reduced that G10 weight up inside both sides, which helped you on thickness. And at the same time, it did reduce some weight because if you put those big old liners on the outside plus had the G10, you know, you start to get a little thicker. Yeah. Now, she's going to smack you if you don't let her hold that knife soon. <laughs> I don't smack. I just look hard. <laughs> She will give you the hard look. Come on, girl, you can do it. Can you do the thumb stud? That's the question. Of course I can. She's better at the thumb studs than we are. There you go. 
Really? Yes, I have terrible dexterity with thumb studs. She has somehow gotten those little baby thumbs to make this work proper. Stop. It's true, though. You do it way better than I do it. That is for sure. So, I like this knife. That thing's going to run you only 45 bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that's and a, we have different colors in those too, right? So we I, every, everything's OD green on that. We've, oh, on we've that talked one. about right. making uh, we've talked about making a black, but <laughs> we just haven't done it. There, teal G ten is not available on the market well, that I've be. been able to get hold of yet. It but should be be really pretty. There's actually a uh, uh, a three and seven eighths on the drawing board. If we can find some teal, nice. we're thinking we might bring nice. out a little smaller version. No, that'd be awesome. A mini I think that's a great that idea. Would be great. The action on that is just super sweet. You're nailing it with that thumb stud. I know. I feel really good about you it. You can t definitely feel the ball bearings in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we both I jinxed me. myself. <laughs> yeah. that too. That's the jinx right there. You just got to say yep. it there. In case you're wondering at home, if you're listening on the podcast at all, uh, this thing is 3.25 inch. Uh, the blade is 3.25 inches. Overall, it's an eighth of an inch thick. It's four and a half inches closed, and it's built right here in the USA. I'm wondering that if you're going to do a thumb stud, you got to do like those. Yeah, actually, you just push straight forward. Well, I guess you can do it that way too. <laughs> for, for us guys with big thumbs, we can't get in there to do that sweep. So the only thing we can do is actually lay our thumb on the thumb stud, and if the thumb stud, if the pivot distance is figured right on the cam, that's what kills me. You actually just like you're snapping your fingers. Right. Oh, I That's what I out. noticed is it's almost like you're going like a Fonzie A hey, and it seems yeah. to work better with yeah, thumb if you, studs. If you, yes, keep that thumb up at the end. Keep the thumb up at the end. That, that's the way. You just push straight forward. And, uh -huh. that, and that, if the if you notice, if you start out and it's on the left side of your thumb, when you extend out, it ends up on the right side of your thumb. Nice. And that's that working around that cam. That's actually part of what you design when you're figuring that's that. That's cool. Thumb. To keep that thumb stud where it works straight every forward. Day. Well, look, I learned my thumb studs off of that, like assisted opener, and I had to make sure my thumb was out of the way before it got That's me. That's <laughs> true. That is true when it gets you. That's cool. So that, that is the uh, Bear and Son Bear Edge Sideliner. You can get that one for forty-five bucks in our at smkw.com. Let's look at wait, a more traditional knife. Wait, he just showed you. He just told you how to do a thumb opener. You gotta try it. <sighs> There you Boom. go. There you go. Thank you. I feel better. <laughs> this one is the the cowhand lockback, and I know you guys made this one for a while, but this is the. Um, I'm gonna pull it down here. Hit, hit the highlights of what we've got. We're looking at right here. That is so, so you got a yellow dollar and handle, mm -hmm. uh, bone pin dome. You've got a 1095 polished carbon steel blade. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the one hand opener on it. It is a lot back, so it, it, right. you know there's no speed to the one hand. It's just you know, but it does give you one hand ability. It's got a metal pocket clip on it uh, to give you a good a good ride in the pocket. It's an easy in and out pocket clip on your pocket. Mm -hmm. The uh, nickel silver, of course, you know, it's just polished up like a regular traditional knife. Uh, solid liners all the way down. Just it's it's a nice carry pocket knife. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, of course, working in the industry, you know, so and around the industry, so I carried a lot of traditional pocket knives. And I still usually have, you know, one or two in my pocket, you know, at a time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, I, I just found I like clip knives. And I was using the knife that I had clip on. But, mm -hmm. you know, my friends and stuff expect me to pull something out of my pocket a little bit nicer than the same old black knife that everybody right. else on the street's carrying. And that gave me a platform to, to make me something uh, kind of pretty and, uh, you know, with abalone or something of that nature. That, uh, my hands are sweaty. Nervous. There's also a bit of oil on that. Is that the, it's a 1095 blade on that. Yeah, it's a 1095 yeah. blade, yeah. so it comes out of the box with quite a bit of oil. But good, that um, protects it straight out of the box for you. You know, most people are going to actually stick it in an apple or something and turn it pretty quick. I love patinaing uh, the knives like that. My my grandfather actually took them and would uh, stick them in hot cornbread. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good that idea. Was, that was his thing. My he dad carried an old timer Stockman forever, and I had no idea that the black the blades didn't come black. As a kid, they were right. just black. But that's because the whole thing was patinaed for as long as it had. They were just solid black. I love the idea on this. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, you remember? I think it was about maybe two weeks ago when we were filming a show, and I was talking about pocket clips, and I always like there's to be a space right here, so that way it snaps and you know it's holding it tight, but it gives you enough space that it's not. Oh yeah. You know it. Like, if you put this on a belt loop in here, it's not going to just slide out. But if it were all just laying down flat, it has more ability to, like, slide and move around. So I always point. like there Let to be... Let me show it on camera, too. 
I just like there. I always like that there is a like. She a space likes there. this distance here that has an extra space in it, and then I I was with her on that too. That I like the ski shape. On a pocket clip, I just I hate when they're rounded this way on there, like a ballpoint pen. Rips your pants. I love that ski when it just slips in there like that. Well, the other thing, if you have that much room in the back, you you know, if you're wearing blue jeans, you know, which yeah, we all like to do when we're not working. That part, yeah. Uh, is you know, you're not sitting there riding and tearing that seam with the pocket up every time mm -hmm. you move your knife back and forth, it's sticking your hand in your pocket. That's what I was so, talking about. So yeah, that's a uh, that's kind of a nice. Nice thing. I like this knife because it marries traditional with modern needs. It's yeah. a good lockback. It's a one-hand opener. It's got the pocket clip. It's going to lock up tight for you, uh, so you can use it. I mean, if, if you're if you're the guy sitting in the edge of the warehouse cutting the boxes open all day, you can pop out your knife that is look looks traditional but works just like a modern folder. Yeah, it's a, it's, it, it, it's a young back. person Sunday knife. I agree. <laughs> and, you know, That's a good we point. all had something, you know, in our pocket. You know, you carry something a little heavier duty during the week, but, you know, I right. go like to that. nice. Now, I know for sure knife. that you make different versions of this knife. <laughs> yes, we, we do this knife uh, in a wood handle and uh, and also a. Uh, We've we've done some runs and some and some bone handles in yeah. different limited edition runs. Yeah. Um, I know. Uh, Usually about Christmas time, we usually run a Damascus version. Yes, and, and a yes. bone handle that. Did uh, you do rosewood with smoky. Damascus last year? Or something uh, like that? We do we do rosewood as an everyday carry. Okay, um, but we did. Um, I think it was torch saw cut last year. Yes, Ooh. that's what um, I remember. That sounds but uh, I think it's going to be a amber jig this year. Nice, nice. You heard it here first. Amber jig this year. That's a great little knife, and that one's only going to set you back fifty bucks. And again, made in the USA. That's right. By Beard and Son. 100% you made in the USA. 1095 blades on it. Let me make sure everybody knows that it was 3.75 inches closed, so it rides really easy in your pocket. It's only 2.7 ounces. So that is the Beard and Son Cowhand Lockback with the yellow Daryl and Handle. I sounded like a radio DJ just then. Who can drop it into the next one? <laughs> okay, this might actually be my favorite thing on the table, just to be dead honest. It's the uh, Baron Son Bold Action 5. Boom! Ooh. I love a good automatic. And that one's got a nice, she's gonna like this one too, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her tell you why she likes it. I why do. you like it? Because it's fast, it's got a good open, but it doesn't pop out of my hand. She hates it when it's so strong it wants to jerk from the palm of your hand. Oh, and you're... she's thrown knives at me while we're yeah. filming, so I know. But that thing has accident. good. <laughs> that I'm thing, sure it was. It has good action, it's solid, Look at that but point. it's not so much that it's over the top. That's right. cool. Look at that. I'm not seeing that kind of shape. Well, the auto, I just like it to hit hard enough that it makes my wrist bounce. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, when it hits. Right. But I don't want it to feel like it just broke my wrist. Right. Exactly. So let's hold this one down here and let uh, we'll Matt let tell us it. about it. Boop. Look at that so, blade. So with this, you've got a slide safety to keep it from deploying in a pocket. It is a pocket safety. It's not a lock in the open position. It's okay. just the button works as the lock. So, it, But it is just a slide safety to keep it opening from the pocket. Uh, you've got actually a 14 c 28 in nice. black coated. It's a modified Tanto. Uh, so talk that, to her about that blade shape because she's really so, I can see her drooling over it. So this blade is actually a, a pretty unique piece where we've put a recurve in the, in the what should be the straight. Mm -hmm. okay. That helps with cutting tasks such as a seat belt or a rope. No need for serration right. to be nice. able to rip through a seat belt. Uh, and it gives you that extra point. Now, what's really neat is if you need to cut open a box or something, you've really got two points. That stuff that comes right. that says, do not use a knife. Right. You can actually drop that lower point in, hold the handle against the box, and skin that tape right so open. So that's like so that. funny because that is exactly what, um, who was it we were talking to? Lucas Burnley was sitting with us at, at Blade, and he was talking about that thing. So with one of his knives, it has a point like that on it. But he was saying, I can open boxes that same way. He will take, he will grip up on it and put his knuckle against the top of the box, and that one single point will just go through tape and nothing inside the box. Yeah, what I usually do is just uh, set the handle all the way down and tilt the knife. And see, that makes perfect sense with your recurve. Because because what we've done here is we've made the head a little bit deeper uh -huh. to give you that bolster feel to sure. keep you from slipping up on it. Mm -hmm. So you really just tip it. And for those of us hunting, they're used to sticking our, our hand across the right, back of the blade. Right, right. Just tip it and slide straight down. Use the knife as a guide. That's awesome. I yeah, like no, that. that's better than the design we looked at at Blade Show. That's awesome. So, um, but it gives you a, you've got a nice false edge to mm -hmm. help reduce that that tip. You know, it's not tip heavy. Yeah. This knife's not tip heavy. 
uh, and then you know, you got that you know instead of having that real sharp straight you got a little bit of a curve so you can right. still slice because that sharp straight straight on a tanto blade won't let you slice no no it's, no it wants to catch it's just for catching yeah. and piercing yeah mm -hmm. uh and more of a chisel this with a little bit of curve to it you can still slice so you, with that you created tip. a belly basically so you yeah. a little bit of, of a belly on the front of the yeah. blade i like that on the on you know basically a a tanto look yeah. So it, it is a it's a definitely a modified blade. It's a little different than what mm -hmm. most of you know is running around in the industry. You know, it's yeah. not it's a. I'll show blade. it back down here so they can see. But I think all of those things are just. I mean, it makes total sense now why it's there and why the choices are there, especially for an EDC like this. Talk to me about the handle material. So, so this is something that's you know we do a lot of traditional knives and we we've, we've gotten in doing you know quite a bit of tactical knives, but. We still like playing with bone handle materials and things of that nature, so we've put white smooth bone handles on this particular oh, model. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it, it adds a little bit to the knife. We still make it in G10. You know, it's a little bit more affordable right. in G10, but you know, the bone handle is just something not everybody carries. Right. I no, like to be different. Cool. I don't like my I don't like my car to look like everybody else's car. I don't like you know my knife to look like everybody else's, and I, I think a that. lot of us are that way. We don't want to pull it out and our buddy go, I got one of those too. Right. Right, no, I, I hear you. I like that this uh, that the pocket clip reaches all the way over to the G10. Yeah. So you're going to get a little extra grip wherever you need to. That's I like this knife a lot. I really, really do. This thing, guys, if you're listening on the podcast, it is 4.5 inches closed, seven and a half inches overall, weighs about four ounces. Again, made in the USA. The blade thickness on this thing is uh, 0.12 inches thick, so it's right around what is uh, an eighth. Yeah, right, yeah, it's right, right around eight, an eighth. It's yeah. about one eighteen. Yeah, and, it, and the length on that blade is three and a quarter inches. One again, fourteen C two eight N on that twenty eight N. It's a very very nice note and a black coating on that for protection. Fantastic. It's making me think. One thirty five with these bone handles. You're into the premium bear right here, baby, right here. One thirty five on that, but that is so worth it. That would make an awesome gift. I see that you did yeah. the same thing, uh, like that you did to this one on that one too. So that way it just slides in. Right, we we oh, yeah, yeah. rounded it. We, yeah. we we put it, you know, and because that knife is more, it's a little bit higher in tactical. We it's it's pretty well straight lines instead of being rounded. But yes, we put that angle cut on the back end so you can get your hand in and out of your pocket. I so, really like get, this. It just just dawned on me. With that being white smooth bone, if you were good at scrimshaw, you can scrimshaw. That would be awesome. We we've sold several to scrimshaw houses that have done you know neat projects for people. See that, that. is uh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, you know, if you if you got a jewelry sides. store running around with a laser engraver, they can oh. they can stick names. We've seen people get them for groomsman gifts. We've done some groomsman gift work where you know somebody would call in and that is awesome. We're, we're putting a laser engraver downstairs in there the you store. Go. You so could if you're in here for Christmas, come so downstairs cool. with that's awesome. That that's awesome. Cool. I really yeah. like that but, a lot. Yeah, it's it's just a it, you know it's a great platform, and, and it's and it's beautiful white smooth bone. We're we're picking through the white smooth bone and getting some really pretty stuff. Uh, we are CNC milling that out and then milling that white smooth bone to thickness, so that way it's it's a pretty flush fit. Okay. I mean, when you're mixing when you're mixing a natural handle material to right. G10, you're always going to be able to feel the seam a little bit. But it's you know tolerance wise, it's really close right. to being a dead fit, um, and nice. then it is just screwed on, so you know you can always uh, unscrew it and play yeah. around with it and play with your piece and scrimshaw on just the piece of handle material without <laughs> the knife in your hand. I just envisioning. I mean, I could just imagine a, a Chinese style dragon that wraps those <laughs> bolts would be awesome on that knife blade. <laughs> oh my goodness, you just it'd be amazing. I just, I'm sorry. There, that that knife's cool for that very reason. I, it was cool already, but the idea that you can scrimshaw that handle to me makes that even cooler. You could personalize it for somebody, and it would be fantastic. I like that a lot. So yeah, that one's 135. We got one more to get through, and this is the one I'm gonna let you handle because it's a butterfly. <laughs> it's when he throws it across the table is when I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> that is the Bear Ops uh, Bear Song Seven Butterfly. So I can hold it over here to show it on the camera if you want. He's the only one at Blade Show that let me hold a real butterfly knife. Yes. Yeah. Until she took it away. She had to sign the disclaimer in the insurance <laughs> policy, but he let her hold it, by God. <laughs> I even showed her how to flip it. I think she yeah. even she the did. blade a little I bit. I did. Have I you did. heard the story yet about her at the Artisan with the... Uh... No, he did, because that's it was after she confiscated that one. That I was like, the, yeah, the they already confiscated another one. The man too. owner at Artisan was like following her around like... Every time I flipped it, he jumped. Yes. 
Needs to be photographed to take it away from her at the time. He didn't actually take it away. He replaced it. He went and got a different knife. He goes, here, check this one out. And then never brought that one back (laughs) out, ever. (laughs) Took it away, never brought it back out. Oh, that's awesome. We're going to hold it down here and let Matt get She it. walked up in our booth, and the first thing I did was hand her a live blade and I showed know. her how to flip it. I was super excited. <laughs> her face was a Notice Notice that I was not there going, no. No, I, I, your wife was. Yes, of course. She, she was taking care of you. She was right there. No, no, you no, can't no. do that. You, no. you don't hand her that. I'm like, she's fine. <laughs> we'll we'll sew right. the fingers back on when it's time. Yeah, I, I can sew. I'll show which handle to hold. Dude, we're in good shape. <laughs> this is the Bear Song 7. Tell me what's awesome about this, Matt. So this is actually stonewashed head to toe. Okay. Uh, this is a 154CM blade, uh, stonewashed, and then it's got titanium handles. Mm-hmm. So this is sandwich construction. So there's four titanium handles there uh, with, the, with a latch. Right. The neat thing about this knife is there's ball bearing washers. You said that when we were in a meeting and I was like, so what exactly does that mean for this knife? Where do those ball bearings reside? What, how small, they've gotta be tiny, right? They're small ball bearings. We had to, we had to ask and ask to get them manufactured for us, but they're actually setting up inside on each side of this blade. So instead of putting the bronze phosphorus washers you'd normally stick in a butterfly, right? we actually milled down on the blade and made a channel for those ball bearing washers That's to what set I was down wondering. in. That is so cool. what happens is that makes this knife just silky smooth. Silky smooth. It flips fast. Wow. You know, and you can even see when I close it, mm-hmm. you know, it, it bounces back a little bit. Right. So it's just a really fast flipper. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the higher end flippers we manufacture. Sure. It's it's not you know our entry level. Uh, it's got a little bit different. Uh, QC spec than, than the entry level flipper right. that we manufacture, but uh, this this really the the, G, uh, the excuse me the titanium's rounded over here, mm-hmm. and before we bolt finish it, so there's really no sharp points on this handle. And you can feel that when and you hold it. So it, it rotates in the hand. It's uh, it's you know works out pretty good for for doing combinations. I'm not going to do any combinations here. <laughs> Please um, don't. I wish you were. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, and. Uh, just really, I've enjoyed this knife. Uh, we're uh, we're working on a few different things to to make some spring loaded latches and some things nice. of that nature to uh, come out with to add to add you know, to this after bringing this out. Everyone's loved this knife. We've gotten some really great you know reviews on this knife from from people that have called us and said this is what we wanted you to make for ten years. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because they bought the entry level knives and they're like, it was great for entry level, but I'm past that now. Right, at like a high end. And I started out with your knife. I really wish you'd make something higher end. And so it's kind of been something we, we've been working on this knife about three years. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Hey, let me tell you what I appreciate about this knife. Beyond the tech of it, beyond the idea that there are actually little tiny ball bearings in it, which is amazing in and of itself, it's the attention to detail. So to me, the handles are very, very modern. It has a great modern feel to the design, but then it is that stonewash head to toe look, which gives it that, I mean, I've used Bad it assery. feel. It, it really is. It Bad is that assery. alien versus predator feel it, to it, which yes. I just freaking love. And, and, and that's one of my favorite movies. And when I was sitting there <laughs> playing with it, I kept going. And actually, when, when I was working on the design, you know, this is bad to admit, but what I did was I actually put little M's in here. Okay. So, so you know, I, I, usually, I usually don't mark my work. Yeah, no, that's but, awesome. But I, I stuck a little M in there for myself when I was, <laughs> when I was designing it. That's, so, that's so I got awesome. an M in the open and the closed. Nice. Where's the M so, in the open? Uh, I stuck it up here. In the ah, top. I see. I see. Yeah. I dig it. That's I like nice. it. The other piece, the other detail that I can appreciate having done slip joint and traditional design for a long time now myself is the swedge in the tip of the blade. That is a traditional, yeah. gorgeous swedge on a spear point blade. You're right. I, you know, we, we first did like a, a big step swedge grind. Mm-hmm. One, it brought the blade weight out of balance. Right. With the handles. Right. So we had to figure out, you know, we can't grind that much blade out of the head you know, out or we're going to have to, you know, narrow the panel or go a little thicker on the blade to get the weight back right. Right. So, you know, I, we were playing with a few blades and I was like, you know, let's just take it back old school. Yeah. You know. That is practically a scout blade swedge. Right. 
It, it, it is. It, it is really the the program, the way we set that up in the CNC is much like the the old Boy Scout knife we used to we used to make right. in a spear point. It's yep. very much the same specs. See that kind of switch. detail to me. I always look for it, and that's amazing to see in that knife. Guys, that's the Bearsong 7 Butterfly. It is premium. It's a $200 knife, but it is worth every penny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 154cm uh, on the on the uh, blade material, <clears throat> titanium on the handles, all with a dark stone wash finish. 5.4 inches closed, 8.75 inches overall, and weighs only 4.5 ounces. You're not going to get much better than that in a in a Balasong or in a butt Butterfly. It's nice. It is really, really nice. And again, of course, made in the USA. That's awesome. That is awesome. So I love that you're here. I love that you bring our products to uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works and smkw.com. I've sat in several meetings with you over the years, Matt. We always come <laughs> see you at Blade Show. I want to know what's coming from Bear. What is what is on the horizon? What can we talk about here that we can tell them that's going on? Well, we've we've working on a few of the old patterns that we had from the '90s. We've taken a few of those patterns and uh, we're in the process of working on maybe changing them to. Uh, a CNC milled spring okay, and a CNC ground blade making one blade that's screwed together with still maybe a coca bola or a bone handle. Nice. Um, cool. Trying to upgrade, you know, you know, I want it. I've done so much in modern flippers and, and stuff that probably, you know, I'm going to be a little more traditional this year with new stuff. Yeah. I, I want to have some high-tech stuff. There's but don't you think there's that absolute place for that? So, I mean, I, I think I see it all the time online now. You've got the guy who's got this knife in his pocket. And the other knife that's in his pocket is a peanut, uh, a trapper, something else that works. And I think probably all of us here at this table have that similar thing. I've got a peanut in my pocket right now as well as a, a really high-end flipper on my hip. The idea of carrying a traditional along with a modern knife is fantastic. Uh, I live on I live on land and have to work land and you know keep up with fence and stuff and yeah. and uh, you know there's still tasks that I don't want to use my EDC clip knife for right you know because I just want a real fine cutting edge to kind of clean something out and I don't want to damage it you know right. it's already weathered and right. I don't want to make a new hole for that post to weather a little bit more I just need to clean a little bit out you know that's you know my traditional pocket knife is great for that right. so. Um, but yeah, when, when I sat down, you know, last year and was looking through designs and kicking out designs, we kicked out a lot of traditional stuff the last year, mm -hmm. uh, and didn't bring it out in 2019 and we'll debut a new tank stamp. It'll be time for a, for a new, nice. you know, uh, 10 mark tank stamp. Okay. So, uh, you know, we got a new tank stamp and I felt like pulling a little bit of traditional stuff, you know, uh, I even, uh, brought out an old thin knife. That we had tooling from uh, wow. when we bought out uh, Camillus's tooling. Nice. Uh, we actually had a uh, old Finn knife that was actually an old Western knife. Right. Because Camillus actually bought Western yes, in yes, the yes, early yes, '90s. Yes. It's and all such an incestuous when, chain over the years. Then when Camillus, isn't it? <laughs> you come, when Camillus was bought out, you know, we bought the tooling and we pulled out the uh, Finn knife tooling. Nice. And uh, I've I've got a few of those built on my desk, and that's a that's a pretty piece, and one of those pieces I sure. like. You know, a leather sure. sheath on the belt. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of carrying one of these cell phones around on the belt, you know, just a nice little you know thin knife. We have sheath, just we have fun. Definitely uh, love the idea, and I I had I for the first time carried a fixed blade on my hip for over a week. In the last shows we did, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I've never done that before. I just didn't think it was something that I would want to do. But it didn't get in the way. It was the perfect size, and it was just a, a, a small one, so like right. seven and a half, eight inches overall. And anyone that's never carried a fixed blade on their side mm -hmm. should try it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I agree completely. Because anybody that's carrying a, a clip knife in their pocket should just spend the weekend outdoors, hiking, whatever, put the fixed blade on their hip. Yeah. I put my fixed blade on my ankle. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> She always has to be different. She does. Do. It's true. I it do. is so true. Well, because girls don't have, like, you know, we don't always have, like, shorts that have belt loops even. We don't even get pockets half the time. You'll like one other new knife I got. I'm it's excited. Got, it's got a short clip, short knife, but it's made so that way a lady can carry a decent-sized knife mm -hmm. in those short pockets. Oh, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Highly appreciate that. Yeah, you don't see that a lot. That's no. awesome. We can't wait to see what that comes out to be. That's awesome. 
Okay, Matt, we're going to wrap it up. I appreciate you coming in. I appreciate you showing us the Gatco stuff. I appreciate you showing us all of the new and the old and the traditional and the alien versus predator butterfly hey. seven. And I appreciate my cotton candy. Oh, no, that's awesome. Thank you for giving that to her. That yes. way she keeps her fingers and we don't have to. Not sharpened. We don't have to knuckle the swag report knives. That, that just means once she gets good at it. That I've promised her. She's got to go there. I promised her that already. Believe me, I, I may regret <laughs> that promise in the future, but I did promise her that if she learns how to do this and do it well, I'll let her do it with a sharpened blade, for real. Matt, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, this is Matt Griffey of Baron Sun. Go check out all the Baron Sun stuff at smkw.com, Smoky Mountain Knife Works website. That's swags. What's up? I'm Andy. You've watched another episode of Guys Talk Knives. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.